This is a short video about devising algorithms. My name's Alan Dorin. Before you watch the video, make sure you've watched the other videos on algorithms and their components, and make sure you've watched the video on the fake coin problem. Also, have a go at trying to solve the fake coin problem yourself. One day you might be sitting in the park with a friend who says to you, devise me an algorithm. But dear, where do I begin, you ask. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know where at least to begin. Devising algorithms is actually hard. It requires creativity and unfortunately we don't have a general algorithm for creativity. That means we don't have a general algorithm for devising algorithms. But here I've provided an outline of an informal set of steps that you can use to help you solve this problem, that is to help you devise algorithms. The idea is that you go round and round this loop that you can see illustrated until you've solved the problem, until you've got an algorithm that works. The first thing you need to do before you begin is understand the problem. After you've understood the problem, you need to understand what is required in order to solve it. Only then is it time to start writing out an algorithm or a formal series of steps that implement your understanding of the problem and what is required to solve it. Now, chances are the first time you write down an algorithm, it will have mistakes. It might not work properly. The only way that you can learn from this is to test the algorithm. You need to try it out, don't assume it will work. It probably won't. So try it out on lots of different cases. Learn from this about the requirements for solving the problem and come to understand the problem in a new light. Then attempt to fix up the algorithm you've already written or write a completely new one from scratch and test that and learn from it and so on around and around the loop until you've got an algorithm that solves the problem you're trying to solve. Again, just a reminder, go and have a look at the video on the fake coin problem and have a go at trying to solve the problem. From now on, I'm just going to assume that you know the problem well. Okay, so the first thing to do in trying to write an algorithm is to understand the problem you're trying to write an algorithm for. That includes familiarizing yourself with what is known about the problem, what is known about the situation in which the problem arises, and also what's unknown. Obviously, we can use the knowns to help us solve the problem. We can't use the unknowns unless they first become known. Some unknowns will be completely irrelevant to solving the problem. It's important that we identify what are the relevant unknowns. Then, what is the required result? What is it that we're looking for? Having a good understanding of the required result stops us wasting time by trying to devise an algorithm that will give us the answer to some problem that isn't the one we're trying to solve. Lastly, what are the links between what's known, what's unknown, and what's required? That is, how do we go from the knowns to the solution, sometimes by solving for some of the intermediate unknowns? In the case of the fake coin problem, we know that we have 12 coins that appear to be identical. One of them though is a fake and it's of a different weight to all of the other 11 coins. We also have a balance scale and we know how it works. What's unknown about this problem? We don't know if the fake is heavier or lighter. What's the required result? Well, we want to know which one is the fake. The links between the known, the unknown and the required can help us solve the problem. So, in this case, if we can find two piles of coins of equal number, which we know, that do not balance, which we can actually find out, we can make known because we can test it on the scale, then these unbalanced piles of equal numbers of coins must contain the fake, and that's what we're looking for. Now, how do we solve this problem? Well, one approach is to simplify the problem, to try and find a version of the problem that we can solve 
and go from there to solving the more difficult problem. So for instance, instead of 12 coins, what if we had less? Or what if we knew whether the fake coin was heavier or lighter? So here's another version of the problem. Suppose we have a balance and three coins that look identical, but one is a lighter fake. Find a fake. And sometimes it turns out we can solve these simpler versions of the problem. So let's look at this particular one. Here are our three coins, and we know that the fake is lighter. Now I'm going to put coin two and three, the top left there, onto the balance. And coin one, in the corner of the slide, I'm just going to leave aside. I'm not going to weigh it for now. One thing that might happen is that coin two descends on the balance and coin three rises. Now, these two coins, two and three, are of different weight. Therefore, one of them must be the fake. Since in this simple version of the problem, we know that the lighter one is the fake, then coin three is the fake. We've solved this problem. Now, an alternative in the bottom right of the slide is that when we put two and three on the scale, the scale remains balanced. That means neither of them is a different weight to the other. Therefore, we know that neither two nor three is the fake and there's only one coin left. That's coin one. Coin one must be the fake. There, we've solved this simple version of the problem. Let's make the problem a little more complex. Let's pretend that we don't have this known anymore about the fake being lighter. So we now go to the problem, suppose we have a balance and three coins that look identical, but one is a differently weighted fake. It could be heavier or lighter, and we want to find the fake. We'll return to our original scenario here. We're going to weigh coins two and three and leave coin one off the balance. When we do this, we may find that coin three rises and coin two descends. Now in this case, we know that these two coins are of different weight. Therefore, one of those two coins, two or three, must be the fake. Coin one is not the fake. We've written that out. Now, we want to know if coin one is not the fake, which of the other two is the fake. So we could take, for instance, coin two and weigh it against coin one. Coin one is not the fake. So if the balance rises, on coin two, then coin two is a light fake. If the balance sinks on coin two, that is coin two descends, then coin two is a heavy fake. If coins one and two balance, then neither of them is the fake. So what does that leave? Which one is the fake? It must be coin three. We can solve this problem. Now, Here's an alternative again in the bottom right. Suppose again we put two and three on the balance and they don't unbalance. The balance remains level. Well then we know neither two nor three is the fake. Which one's the fake? It must be, of course, coin one. We've solved the problem. So now we've gone from a simple version where we had three coins and we knew that the fake was lighter to a slightly more complex problem where we've got three coins and a differently weighted fake, but it's unknown whether it's lighter or heavier than the other coins. How do we move from these problems up to solving the full problem, the complex one? Well, just in a series of steps. Here, we could solve the first two problems. The third problem down, suppose we have a balance and nine coins that look identical, but one is a differently weighted fake. Well, think about this. We've got nine coins which can easily divide, be divided into three groups of three coins. And we can already solve the problem for three coins. We should be able to solve it for nine then, right? That's just solving the problem for three coins three times over. Think about it and see how you do it. Now let's go to the full problem. Suppose we have a balance and 12 coins that look identical, but one is a differently weighted fake. Well, 12 coins are just four sets of three coins. We could solve it for three coins. Surely we can solve the problem for 12. Again, think about it and see how you do it. Now, in this case, we were able to simplify the problem. An alternative approach is to try and find a related problem. It might not be any simpler than the current problem, but it might already have a solution that is known to us. So therefore, we might be able to adopt that solution as 
a partial solution to our current problem, modify it in some way that is adapted to the current situation and solve our problem. Maybe we can even find a different problem that's got the same unknowns and we can look at how those unknowns are discovered and made known in solutions to the other problem and that might help us devising our algorithm. Sometimes we get stuck. One thing that's useful to do if we really get stuck is to make sure that we've used all the available information to us. That is, look at all the things that are known and check that we've used them all in our solution. If we're missing one, that can often be the key. Oops, I think I've skipped a slide. All right, once we've done all that, we write an algorithm to solve the problem. That is, we formally set down the steps that we follow in order to reach the solution. The algorithm takes an input and provides an output. The input are the knowns and parameters, and the output, hopefully, is in the answer. It's the answer that we're looking for. The algorithm will have a series of steps, A, B, C, and so on. Each of these needs to be simple enough for us to execute it directly. If we don't know how to execute one of those steps in the algorithm, then it needs refining. It needs to be broken down into yet simpler steps. Once we've got our algorithm, don't assume it will work. It probably won't work first go. So we should try the algorithm on simple cases, on complicated cases, and on unusual cases. For instance, supposing our algorithm was an algorithm for multiplying two numbers together. We should try it on simple cases like 2 times 5 or 6 times 1. We should also try it on complicated cases like 4,072,000 multiplied by 6.2. We should try it on unusual cases, for instance, multiplying two numbers where one of them is zero or where one of them is a negative number. If we try the algorithm in all these different cases in an attempt to kind of break it and we still find that it works in all these cases, we can be pretty sure we've got a good algorithm or at least one that works. However, usually it won't work in some cases, so we need to identify the cases where the algorithm works and the cases where it doesn't. And we need to understand why it works in certain cases and why not in other cases. And then we can go back and improve the algorithm with a better understanding of the problem and how we solve it. Now, when we do come up with an algorithm that works, that's not the end of the story. As this young lady is saying here, or asking us, is this the best algorithm? Is it the most efficient? Is it the most elegant algorithm? These are important questions in designing algorithms. The first algorithm we come up with is often not the best, and there might be good reasons for improving it. So that's about all at this point. I'm going to tell you on how to solve the problem of devising new algorithms. Just remember, writing algorithms is hard. It's a challenging problem. Because it requires creativity, one way to enhance this in ourselves is to practice. Practice makes perfect, right? An approach is often when we're encountering a problem that seems too difficult to try and find a simpler version of the problem that we can solve and extrapolate from there to the more complex problem. Sometimes we can find related problems or similar problems that we can solve and we can take the solutions for the similar problems and adapt them to fit our circumstances. Finally, when we do come up with an algorithm, make sure that we test it carefully, try to understand why it works and also why it fails before we try again. Given that practice makes perfect, now would be a good time to begin. Have a go at writing an algorithm for solving the fake coin problem. Best of luck and thanks for watching.